prosperity is back again. Construction is starting on thousands of new homes and buildings. At the new armory in Minneapolis, they're working so fast they had to get concrete mixers that do their work on wheels. Now, there's a smart idea. The loading station is about one mile away. Time enough for complete mixing. In addition to the time saved in mixing, there is room saved on the job. No cluttering up of the place with mixing machinery or materials. This truck is typical of the new machines in industry which are helping to bring business back to normal. More men are required than with the old stationary mixers, yet time, effort, and total cost are all reduced. In the woods, lumber is again being cut on a large scale to supply the demands, and new trucks are doing their part. Nine tons of logs on this one. Thousands upon thousands of logs that will soon be everything from new homes to furniture. Who has the oldest house in the United States? This house is called the oldest, but there's a lot of dispute going on. This one was built more than three centuries ago, they say, by Franciscan friars who came here from Spain. But a block away stands the Don Toledo House, another claimant to the title. No one is able to prove it either way, so the argument keeps on. At any rate, the oldest house has been introduced to the newest house, the House on Wheels. Old Don Toledo could never have imagined such modern transportation at his doorstep. When the horseless carriage was still a coat, this advertisement appeared in the Saturday Evening Post, a clear illustration of progress. Many might prefer the old way. At least it had knee action legs carrying it front and rear. Here's a buggy that won a blue ribbon for a 50 mile non-stop run, believe it or not. Guaranteed to climb a 25% grade and the picture at the left proved it. Note the ease with which the passengers refrain from falling out the rear door. Get up. Half bug and half buggy is this novel streamlined car and touring trailer owned and built by Angelo R. Novo. The motor has been moved back to the middle of the chassis, but driving and steering controls operate the same as in any other car. The trailer seats four persons and sleeps three. A periscope over the driver's head serves as a rear vision mirror. He may call it streamlining, but it looks like a turtle to us. The wheel of fashion turns to jewelry, and costume jewelry turns to wheels. Exclusive New York shops have introduced a new novelty. Their latest creations are displayed in the luxurious interior of a motor car. Well, it's certainly the right place to show this new piece of costume jewelry, the transportation bracelet, perhaps to be worn when one wants to go places and do things. At this rate, they'll soon be giving a car with every bracelet, but ah, uh ah, -uh, the models don't go with. You have to supply your own. And when Milady goes to the theater, even her jewels must be dramatic. Cellophane with brilliance or diamonds are the latest, and the novelty of displaying them against the beauty of the motor car interior is the last word. over that racket. What'd you say now? I said I just driven a couple of thousand miles. Can I get my oil changed here?
The United States Army post at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, takes its motor equipment for a hike through the hills. This country seems to have been laid out perfectly for testing the trucks that move the Army. Guns, ammunition, men and machines, everything rolls on wheels. It takes a lot of power to pull up these hills and the best of brakes to get back down. The artillery must be equipped with brakes to keep it from running over the trucks. Just to be sure that they don't take any shortcuts around the bumps, the captain shows the way and the army plays follow the leader. Another couple of hills and then into the woods and hauling a piece of artillery with you doesn't make it any easier. Up and down hill through mud, water, sand and anything else that happens to get in the way. Gotta be half duck and half mountain goat to get by here. Five passengers in the rumble seat lend moral support to the driver. If he gets stuck here, five men are going to get their feet wet. The U.S. Army doesn't take any chances with its motor equipment. Every piece proves its worth before it ever gets to be a buck private. At Flint, Michigan, government orders are placed for 18,000 of the most modern trucks and the production line turns olive drab. Little trucks and big ones, but all will be required to withstand the most severe tests of the United States government standards. Every truck is built with the same precision that goes into the best commercial trucks. Off the line, the insignia are applied and out they go into government service. They're in the army now. The latest in radiator ornaments. This family watchdog takes to the road in his own private perch. No, not a bird dog. And he even gets no draft ventilation. Maybe they call them dog goggles. To the opera, James, and don't spare the horses. As an ornament, he's great. But as a horn, not so good. He barks at all the cats, and only wags his tail at pedestrians. Be careful there, fella. If you don't fold in those ears, you're gonna take off in the breeze. Not standard equipment, but a neat accessory. And he certainly gives the car a doggy appearance. 